Hello and welcome to Western Washington History. Today I will be discussing the town of Shelton. Shelton is the county seat of Mason County, meaning that is where the county's business takes place. You will find the Mason County Courthouse as well as the jail in Shelton. Mason County was once part of Thurston County until 1854 when Sawamish County was created. The name was changed to Mason County in 1864 to honor Charles Mason who was the acting territorial governor during the war with the natives. Before the settlers poured over the Cascades, the area was home to the people of the water, now known as the Squaxin tribe. They called the area Coda. They hunted, fished, and gathered shellfish between what is now Shelton and Olympia. In 1854, the Treaty of Medicine Creek created a reservation for them on an island four and a half miles long and one half mile wide. The island became known as Squaxin Island. The native people were confined there during the native wars of 1855 and 1856. When the war ended, most moved to the mainland to farm, hunt, and collect berries and other herbs. In 1965, the tribe began buying back land that was once theirs, and that continues today. If you're in the area, make sure to check out the Squaxin Island Tribe Museum Library and Research Center. As I have said before, please visit these local history museums and research centers. Some are only financed through donations of visitors. My videos are here to spark an interest not to take away from these historic centers. You will see exhibits and learn things that you will not learn from my videos. David and Francis Shelton left their home in Missouri and set out for the Oregon Trail. When they reached Walla Walla, they met Dr. Marcus Whitman, as so many of the Oregon Trail travelers did at that time. They came out of the Cascade Mountains and made the rest of the journey to Fort Vancouver. I have also made a video on Fort Vancouver, the link is in the description. With his last bit of money, David bought flour and cough syrup for his two children who were sick with the measles. They ran into a friend who took them to Save Island where they could rest for the night. In 1847, they got a land grant for 320 acres in East Portland, planted a crop and lived off of split peas bought from the Hudson Bay Company and fish bought from natives. David went to California for the gold rush in 1849, up the American River, and came back with a bag of gold dust. In 1851, David Shelton, Lauren Hastings, Francis Pettigrove, and a few other guys bought a 75-foot schooner named Mary Taylor and set sail for Olympia. Pettigrove, who had co-founded Portland, Oregon, and Hastings, got off the schooner at what would become Port Townsend. There, along with two other guys, they founded the town. Another aboard the Mary Taylor got off at Stellicum. David and his wife continued on to Olympia and reached their destination in February of 1852. While there, David was elected to serve on Olympia District's first Board of Commissioners. In 1853, David and Francis moved north to what would one day be called Shelton. This was two years before the treaty with the natives and there was a native village on the shore of Oakland Bay when they arrived. In 1855, and the Sheltons claimed 640 acres. In order to claim it, they had to travel to the land office in Oregon City, Oregon. Francis Shelton's 320 acres was the area that became Shelton's historic business district. David's portion was the area to the north of the future town. They continued to buy more land in 20 and 40 acre parcels. Reports say they had 1,200 acres before they started to sell it all off. The Sheltons set to work planting rye and built a cabin on what is now Franklin Street between 1st and 2nd. There is a plaque there now. By 1854, David was a member of the territorial legislature. The community of Oakland was two miles up the beach from the Shelton homestead. Seven different families lived there. William Morrow, not only the county auditor, but also a Baptist minister, had the county seat in his cabin. Oakland was on its way to becoming a town. They had a post office, a school, and a store. What they didn't have that most loggers in the area desired was a saloon. In fact, Mr. Morrow banned the use of alcohol on his property. The loggers would go to David Shelton's claim and frequent Mac Simmons' floating bar at what was being called Shelton's Point or Sheltonville. Sheltonville got its own school in 1868. Shelton's daughter Mary was the first teacher. Of the ten children in her school, three of them were her siblings. The school was probably on the Shelton's farm, but no one knows for sure. Mary spent 12 years as the teacher. William Neeland built a sawmill in 1883 with a flume that moved the logs to Oakland Bay and began milling lumber. 
He also built the Mason County Central, a railroad to transport harvested trees to the mill. Neyland left after two years. When he returned later, he built the Neyland Hotel and Shelton Opera House. Neyland Park is now at the site of his mill. The Sheltonville Post Office was established in 1885. Grant C. Angle founded the Mason County Journal in 1886. The Masonic Lodge, originally located in Oakland, moved to Sheltonville in 1887. David Shelton, as well as many of the pioneers, were Masons, so this was a big move for the town. David Shelton was approached by Seattle investors. They wanted to use his land at the head of the bay to build a new mill and log the timber in the area. David agreed and platted the site and sold lots. He kept an acre for his farm and orchard. The Goldsboro Creek Railroad Company, later named the Satsup Logging Railroad, ended at Shelton's site. Once Shelton started selling lots and the logging got started, the town really took off. There was a laundry, a grocery, shoe store, Shelton Hotel, Morrow Hotel, and the Pioneer Saloon. The county seat was moved from Oakland to Sheltonville on April 28, 1888. 1890 was a busy year for Sheltonville. That was the year the town was incorporated. Now it was called Shelton. William Neeland was a senator that year. Also that year, a Canadian working for the Port Blakely Mill Company created his own company with financial backing from Port Blakely investors. The name of the company was S.G. Simpson & Company. The Satsup Logging Railroad went bankrupt in 1891. Alfred Anderson stepped in, propped up the failing bank that relied on the rail and logging industry. The first Baptist church was built in Shelton in 1892. In 1895, Seoul Incorporated Simpson Logging Company, along with Alfred Anderson and a couple other investors from Port Blakely. The headquarters at this time was Seattle. At this point, they were producing 100 million board feet a year. Sol Simpson met Mark Reed in 1896. Mark had gone to a couple of colleges, had worked for an attorney in Olympia, and had done some retail work. Sol was impressed with Mark and put him in charge of the company store, the Lumberman's Mercantile. St. Edward's Catholic Church was built in 1898, but didn't have its own priest until 1935. In 1900, Alfred Anderson, along with the railroad operator Sol Simpson and Mark Reed, founded Simpson Lumber Company. When Mark Reed married Sol Simpson's daughter Irene in 1901, the business partnership was solid. Besides the predominant lumber industry, Shelton had a dairy industry during the early part of the 20th century, some beef cattle ranches, and benefited from Mason County's oyster raising industry. In the early 1900s, Shelton School had 250 students. The grades were from kindergarten to 10th. If you wanted to graduate, you had to go to high school in Olympia for two years. In 1909, Shelton High School was opened. In an effort to put Shelton on the map, five men calling themselves the Overland Westerners set out on horseback in 1912 to visit every state capital. The plan was to end at the 1915 World's Fair in San Francisco. The horse Pinto holds the record as the only horse ever to walk the entire continental United States. The trip was 20,352 miles in total. When they arrived in San Francisco, no one would cover the story. In 1914, a fire broke out in town. 17 of the town's 20 stores burned. Shelton Bank burned, but the vault remained intact. Also, the Shelton Methodist Church Belfry caught fire, but was put out before it damaged the whole building. Sol Simpson's widow, Mary Simpson, and Alfred Anderson, Sol's business partner, had the Shelton Library built that year and housed both town hall and the library. David Shelton donated the land. It is now the Mason County Historical Society Museum. Alfred Anderson would die before the construction of the town hall and library began. Mark Reed now ran all Simpson business. That included Simpson Logging Company, Phoenix Logging Company, the, the Peninsula Railroad, the State Bank of Shelton, the Shelton Navigation Company, and Lumberman's Mercantile. Mark Reed was voted into the House of Representatives in 1915 and served until 1931. He was the Speaker of the House from 1923 to 1925. Shelton General Hospital was built in 1920, a combined effort of Simpson Lumber Company, the town of Shelton, and Mark Reed. Before that, the nearest hospital was in Olympia. The town council moved to the Shelton Memorial Building in 1921 and the library now occupied the whole building. The Northern Pacific Railroad made a line from Elma to Shelton in 1926, which made the wood there more accessible. Mark Reed built a mill that could handle hemlock trees. The wood was softer than fir, so it needed a different setup. 
A San Francisco investor started a company called the Rainier Pulp and Paper Company. President Edward Mills ran the company. They built a pulp mill near the other two mills just south of Goldsboro Creek. The pulp mill was one of the first to make paper out of wood waste from a logging mill. In 1929, the old wood frame county courthouse, built on land donated by David and Francis Shelton, was replaced with a concrete sandstone structure at the same site. The sandstone, like a lot of sandstone around western Washington, was mined from the quarry in Tenino. A wing was added to the library building in 1930. This was paid for by Mrs. Simpson and Alfred Anderson's widow, Agnes. Rainier Pulp Mill now has three pulp mills and is the largest pulp paper mill in the world. Mark Reed, as state congressman, helped to push for the Olympic Loop Highway, which opened in 1931. It was 330 miles long at its completion. The Olympic Highway started at Pacific Highway in Olympia and went around the Olympic Mountains, connecting all the small towns along the way. The road was a loop that would end up back in Olympia. Rainier Pulp Mill teams up with DuPont in 1931 to produce rayon from wood pulp. Rayon is a material used to make fabric for clothes as well as other items. They also made food grade cellophane there for wrapping food. In 1937, Rainier Pulp and Paper, Grays Harbor Pulp and Paper in Hoquiam, and Olympic Forest Products Company in Port Angeles merged to become Rayonier. They combined the names Rayon with their former name of Rainier to create the new name. By 1940, the Rainier plant in Shelton employed 530 people. Simpson Lumber Company signed an agreement in 1946 with the United States Forest Service. The agreement gave Simpson Lumber all sales from the reserved areas through 2046. Meanwhile, they don't have to pay taxes on the land while sitting idle growing trees. In 1955, due to several million Christmas trees shipped out of Shelton each fall, Shelton Chamber of Commerce came up with the slogan Christmas Town USA to help create more tourism. The 1950s brought major changes to Shelton. The rail yard and roundhouse were demolished and a new shopping center put in its place. A section of line was left for a display of Tolly, a shade locomotive built in 1924 for Simpson logging. The engine was named after Sol Simpson's wife Mary Simpson's nickname Tolly. There is also a caboose built in Shelton by the Peninsula Railroad Company that sits with Tolly. Both are on the National Register of Historic Places. I know I didn't cover everything. It's hard to fit over a hundred years into a short video. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and would like to see a part two. Thank you for spending some time with us and remember, what you do today will be history tomorrow, so make it count.